victory belongs to us. Amen? Many times we marvel how the Holy Spirit works. Hallelujah. The question I'm going to ask you this morning is, true, Jesus has won the victory. The victorious life, the very life he has given to us, he has given that resurrected life. So what are you doing with that resurrected life? What are you doing with that resurrected life? Turn with me to Mark chapter 16. Book of Mark chapter 16. Verse 15 onwards. From verse 15 we have been read. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 onwards. Can one of you read those verses please? In my name shall the cast of devils. They shall speak to you in tongues. They shall make up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be recovered. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached unto them, and the Lord working with them, and confirming the word. Amen. Now verse 20 again. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So Mark was saying, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These things will follow whoever believes in Jesus. In other words, whoever has the victorious life, they will have these things. The question this morning I'm asking once again. What are you doing with the victorious life? It's true, we once we were in darkness. True, once we were living in sin. True, once we didn't know who Jesus was. But today, if you say you are a child of God, if you say you have come from darkness to light, if you say that uh, you have the, that resurrected life, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that resurrected life? The word of God very clearly says, these signs will follow those who believe in Jesus. If you have the victorious life, if you have the resurrected life, these signs should follow. Is it following? Is it is these signs following you? Are you preaching the gospel? Can we can you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to who are being saved it is the power of God Amen. So the message of the cross or the uh, uh, King James says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us we are saved who are saved it is the power of God when you preach the gospel for the other people it's a foolishness they may call you fool because they don't understand they have not tasted it but you, your very life has been changed. But if your life has been changed, why, why are you keeping that inside? Many times we have excuses saying that, oh, we have winter, we have snow, we the cold climate, we can go out and so on. But now, no excuse at this time, especially the three months of summer, we have to go and preach the gospel. We have to share whatever God has done in our lives. If we have the resurrected life, the Paul, is, Paul, Paul was saying here, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish 
is foolishness. But unto us we are saying it is power of God. I am reading the same verse from the Amplified Version for the story and message of the cross is sheer abs absurdity and folly to those who are perishing and on their way to perdition. But to us who are being saved, it is the manifestation of the power of God. Manifestation of the power of God. How the power of God will be manifested? Only when you go out and preach the gospel, when you go out and share the gospel, when you go out and uh, lay your hands on the sick people, then only we will, you will know how the power of God is manifested. Hallelujah. So God is calling us to preach the gospel. So, according to this verse, gospel of Jesus Christ is a power. Gospel of Jesus Christ has power. So when the gospel is exercised or shared or preached, the power is released. But if you don't preach the gospel, the power will not be released. When you, if you don't go out and preach the gospel, if you don't go out and uh, pray for the sin, the power will not be released. That's the reason God is calling us. Amen. So we can experience the outcome of the power in numerous ways. So I want to take you through the book of Acts certain things, what happened in the first century church when they preached uh, preach the gospel what happened? various things happened, various benefits we can see that is what happened in the book of Acts of the apostles so I want to share certain results of preaching the gospel in book of Acts first of all go, go with me to Acts chapter 2 we are going to read Verse 43 to 47. Verses 43 to 47. And the verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. God added to the church daily. In other words, church growth took place daily. People were added to the church because of the preaching of the gospel. Yeah, if you ask, all of you know, Acts chapter 2, when uh, the 120 people waited at the upper room, God poured out the Holy Spirit for the first time. After that, they were preaching. They were preaching. They were continuously preaching. They were not worried about their life. They were not worried about their wealth or things. They put everything in common and they were preaching the gospel. They want only the kingdom of God to be extended. They knew the power of God in the gospel. So if you say, if you, if you, if you have sung this morning saying that, our life is victorious. The victorious life God has given to us means where is that victory? So if you have tasted the power of God, power of God, then if you have tasted and if you know the gospel, preaching the gospel is a power, then you will definitely preach the gospel. So we can see first of all, by preaching the gospel, the church growth took place. People were added to church. That's why, that's the verse we read from Acts chapter 2 verses 43 to 47. Amen. Now go with me to, uh, the second uh, result was, there was a word of knowledge through Johnny, he was saying, people hear of the fear. So the second thing we can see, when they knew, the early church, when they knew gospel is the only power of God, well, they didn't have fear. They had only boldness. They had boldness. They were empowered with special boldness. Amen. They were empowered with special boldness. 
Because we want to read, I want to read a few verses. Uh, 413 as chapter 4 verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. And it says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they were preaching and they were able to, other people were able to see the boldness of Peter and John and perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men and they marveled and they uh, took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Because they had boldness and they were preaching, others were able to know that they, because they had been with Jesus, they had this power. They knew the secret. Also go with me to Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. Acts 14 verse 3. The following night the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. Amen. So the night following the Lord stood by him, and he was telling, Be of good cheer, of be bold, Paul, for as thou hast testified me in Jerusalem, so must thou be a witness also in Rome. So God was giving him that boldness. The results of preaching the gospel, they were empowered with special boldness. Thirdly, the apostles received much grace. They were given much grace, more grace. You can find that in 4.33, Acts 4, verse 33. Acts chapter 4, verse 33. It says, and, the, and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. So apostles received much grace, great grace. Because they were preaching the gospel, they were given much grace, more grace. So if you don't preach the gospel, you will not get greater grace. So we have to preach the gospel. Fourthly, uh, the early church, the apostles, they were joyful in tribulation. Also in hardship and humiliation. They were joyful in tribulations, hardship and humiliation. Can you read chapter 5 verse 41, Acts 5, 41. And they departed from the presence of the council. So they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They were rejoicing. So enabling to be joyful in tribulations, hardship and humil humiliation. They were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So now go with me to Acts chapter 7. It 
because they were preaching, God, preaching the gospel, greater revelation and heavenly vision was given. When Stephen was told, can you read 7.55, Acts chapter 5, 7, verse 55, Acts chapter 7, verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Amen. So, but Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly to heaven and saw, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So, greater revelation and heavenly vision we can get when we are preaching the gospel. <coughs> Also verse 60 of the same chapter, verse 60. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. So Stephen was being torn and he was, verse 60 says, and he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. In other words, he was empowered with the spirit of intercessory prayer. He was interceding for the people who have stolen him. So when you preach the gospel, God will give up special grace as well as you will be empowered to intercede for others, intercede for nation. So empowered with the spirit of intercessory prayer. Also pre preaching of the gospel, now go with me to eight, chapter 8. It always brings joy. Preaching of the gospel brings joy. Chapter 8, verse 8, please. And there was great joy in that city. So joy in the city, preaching of the gospel. City was joyful. The people were joyful. The people, people in the city were joyful. Also same chapter, verse 39. He went, he, he, didn't, he was not able to see Philip. And it says he went on his way rejoicing. In other words, there was great joy in the city as well as in the life of a higher authority. He went on with joy. Also chapter 16, verse 34. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, Amen. he and his whole household. Hallelujah. So it's a family. The family who didn't know Jesus. In other words, they were disturbed family. So they were joyful. And when he had brought them into the house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Also, chapter 13, verse 48. It says, And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. So, Gentiles were glad. Gentiles were joyful. The heathens were joyful. So the joy in the city, joy in the life of high authority, joy in the family, disturbed family, also joy among heathens or Gentiles. Now go with me to 9.31. Acts chapter 9 verse 31. That verse has several things happen, several results because of the preaching of the gospel. 931.
Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. So if you carefully notice that verse, it says, the church experience, first of all, it says peace, the rest, because of preaching of the gospel. Also edification. They edified. They were edified because of the preaching of the gospel. Also, there was fear of God. Not fear of men, fear of God. They had the true fear of God. Also, there was comfort in the Holy Spirit because of the preaching of the gospel. So preaching of the gospel has many results. So we have the resurrected life. We, our lives have been changed. We say we are victorious. God has, Jesus has given his victory to us. He has won the victory for us. So that victory belongs to us because we are the children of God. So we know preaching of the gospel only has the power. So we have several results there in book of Acts by preaching of the gospel. So God expects us to preach the gospel. She has the gospel with others. Also Acts chapter 10 verse 44. Because of the preaching of the gospel, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. 1044. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. Amen. And Peter yet spoke these words. The Holy Ghost fell on all, all of them who heard the message. Amen. So Holy Spirit was poured out in everyone who were hearing the message. Of Acts chapter 13 verse 48. Now when the day of this day was glad, they glorified the Lord. Yeah, we read that verse earlier, but there's another point I want to share. They were glad and also and glorify the word of the law. So Gentiles, the heathens, they glorify the law. So God's name will be glorified among the unbelievers when we preach the gospel. So he has glorified God. Now Acts chapter 16 verse 15. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. Amen. In other words, preaching of the gospel, because they preached the gospel, they were invited to the house. In other words, their personal needs were so met because of the preaching of the gospel. First Corinthians 9, 14, please. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 14. It says, even so, as the Lord ordained that they preach, that they who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. In other words, when you preach the gospel, God will meet every need. You will not lack anything. Also, at chapter 19, verses 10 to 12, it says, where because of the preaching of the gospels, miracles and hearings took place. At chapter 19, verses 10 to 12. This went on for two years, so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even hand handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. So extraordinary or supernatural miracles or special miracles took place because of the preaching of the gospel. So if you don't preach, you don't know what you have inside. If you go out and Preach, then only you will know the power of the gospel. Amen. So there are several things, and so there are many more things. Amen. But remember, gospel is the power unto us, those who believe. So this morning I pray. May we get a desire and burden to share the gospel with an expectation. 
I believe the Holy Spirit will help and lead us to experience the outcome of the power. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. They were bold and they were able to preach the gospel without fear. The one reason was, Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit only gave that, gave that boldness. So if you are not being filled with the Holy Spirit, ask Him, He will fill you. The Holy Spirit will change your life totally. Amen. 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 So we sang, what we sang? Lord, we are given. You have won the victory for us. The same victory belongs to us. If you have the victory inside you, I will tell you, preach the gospel, because gospel is a power unto us to whom we believe. Because we believe, gospel is a power. Because we believe in Jesus, He has given that power to us. We have to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. So if there's a good opportunity, I believe Johnny will announce after that, but I will tell Next uh, Friday and Saturday, we have a special meeting with Prophet Bernard Blessing. He's a man of God used all over the world. It's a privilege to have him. But we are having a Millican church because we don't have this place. Millican church at uh, Kennedy and Steve's, number three, Clayton Drive. It's at morning, 10 o'clock, both days. So it's a good opportunity for you to bring others who don't know the gospel. I will guarantee you, God will touch them because He is used of God. Amen. Share about Jesus and bring your friends. God will perform signs and wonders and deliver. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So shall we stand to our feet and look to the Lord? I shared many things, but kindly I request you, go home and read the, the read book of Acts. In a prayerful attitude, go home and read the book of Acts. Meditate upon those verses. God will speak to you one day. God will challenge you. Don't ever hide the gospel. God has changed your life. God has, for each and every one of you, God has given you a testimony. Your life has been changed. Don't keep it for yourself. There are people perishing all over outside. People are living in darkness. If they die without Jesus, they will go to eternal hell. But if you and me, we have the power, we have the answer for the people. Don't keep it for yourself. This is the time. This is the time. Share the good news with others. Gospel is none other than it's called good news. Good news of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who came for us, who died for our sins. He has taken all of us into the cross and He has resurrected and He is alive today. He has given that resurrected life to you and me. He has given that victorious life to you.